playing the Eastern Blitz Arena. It's a two hour long tournament. I'm joining about halfway through. Uh, first place currently has 18 points, so I might be able to make a running. And I'm gonna do something a bit differently this, uh, this stream. Let me fix the layout. Um, every opening in every game is going to be a gambit. So we'll start with the Lafian Gambit, which I know almost nothing about. Um, it's a good sign my opponent is thinking here. The only thing I know is that if takes, then I think black can play e4. And if this, okay, now we have, we have some kind of reverse king's gambit. b3. This looks fun, actually. Put the bishop on c5. And I actually have the threat of knight g4. Like if bishop b2, knight g4. Okay, so he's playing safely. Let's castle. Is it still a gambit if your opponent declines it? Probably. Let's play queen e8. This is a benefit of moving the f-pawn early as it opens up the diagonal for the queen. Creates some more attacking possibilities. Let's play f4 opening the bishop. Yeah, the combination of the queen and both bishops looks pretty terrifying for white. Hello, people in the chat. Nirvan Raymond, Cover, Guy D. Board. Uh, we'll start with this. Ab Somalia. It's Zaus. Jay Brower. Uh, I'll put the queen on h6, because maybe I want to sack. Like, sacking looks really fun. Or maybe knight g4, going after f2. <laughs> this play with, like, b3, bishop, b2, a4, a little bit meaningless. Just giving me free tempi. There's also the plan of g5, g4. Like so many fun things to consider. We'll see what he does and then I'll decide what to do. No one is letting you play the Budapest. I just recorded a third video on the Budapest, which should be uploaded within a few hours. Yeah, knight g1, trying to be safe. Let's play this. I mean, I can add more attackers. Like, my knight can come in, my rook can come to the g file. At some point, white's king side should be cracked. Yeah, g3 I was slightly expecting. But now I'm going for, um, I mean, f f3 I was expecting. But now I'm focused on getting the knight to g3. I mean, if I want to, I could win the rook. Like, play bishop f2 and the rook is trapped. But there should be something better. What to do? We'll start with bishop f2. Like, white is pretty much paralyzed here. Such a fun position. Knight f1. So it takes and then takes on h3. Let's just play queen h4. <laughs> Such a cluster of pieces on the king side. I want to play this and this. Like the majority of squares in this quadrant are occupied by something. <laughs> okay, so I could take with queen or I take with pawn. Take with pawn here. I take king takes, 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 and I have the queen h2 coming. That looks good enough. I mean, I really don't want to give away my dark squared bishop, but it's probably worth it. Let's 
as yet queen h2 can't be stopped. And I think it's force mate. Like these pieces just get in the way. Matt Croset, good to see you're still around. Happy New Year. Okay, so this guy's suffering and now it's made in two. I could promote, but okay. End it there. Nice start. First time in a long time playing the Lafayette Gambit. Someone commented on YouTube to make a video on the Lafian. Um, so maybe that will be my video, just that game. But anyway, okay, let's continue. Uh, I'll berserk this game. Play d4. And every game that I play will be a gambit. So if my opponent doesn't let me play a gambit, I'll have to be creative. I'm pretty sure there's gambits to play against everything. Unless my opponent doesn't move. Ooh, g6. Is there a gambit against g6? Let's play h4 and gambit my pawn. Not really gambit, I'm just offering a trade. I mean, I just want to find a way to sacrifice something for initiative. When the time is right, I can play h6. Andrew Meda, thanks for the sub. Appreciate that. Two months in a row. Okay, so now I could play h6. There's a funny line, h6, bishop f6, and then I'm trapping the bishop with e5. And if bishop f8, then I kind of wish it was bug house to play knight f6 mate. Put the bishop on g5. Maybe invade f6. I mean, I still have to gambit something. But I guess I'll first develop f6. What a move. What if I just gambit a piece? e5 takes, takes, takes. Let's do it like this. I'll play bishop c4. I'm gambiting a bishop. Because I want to win the e6 pawn. If he takes, I might even take with knight first. And then e6 should just be a goner. And queen f3 is coming. Also, I'm threatening to trap the queen. So this looks pretty nice. Play e4, f5. I don't know if I want to be that self-destructive. Speaking of self-destructive, this queen is dead. But black is going to have three minor pieces for the queen because he can take and then... Okay, it should be better for white because I have more center and <laughs> black's not developed. Go for this pawn lunge. D5, D6. Because now I just want to open up uh, at least one file, get the rook into play. Probably continue with knight B5 eventually. Queen G4 coming. Trying to hit him from all directions. King V8 is pretty much forced. I think there's some force mate. Like king b8, rook d8, knight c8, queen g3. There's really no way to avoid that. That was a nice finish. Okay, back to tournament. So, that was a weird opening. My opponent played a little bit too passively, and usually against h4, black should spend the time to play h6 or h5. Suggest you a book for London with two bishop f4. I can suggest you an eight-hour video course 
um, which I, <laughs> I compiled for iChess.net. If you type in the command London in the chat, it should give you a link to the course. Um, if you want a book, I think there's a book by Sedlak. You type in S-E-D-L-A-K, London, and you should be able to find it on Amazon. Okay, so we have a new game. Um, if you play C4, I was going to play the Budapest Knight C3. Let's play C5, gambiting a pawn. If he plays D5, maybe I'll play B5. Yeah. Weird position. And this is going to be similar to like a Banco Gambit. He'll probably take, unless he doesn't take. If he takes, maybe Queen A5. Mm. Queen a5, knight c3, knight e4, bishop d2. I have an idea. I'm going to play queen a5, provoking knight c3, and then I'm going to play bishop b7. Oh, I mouse slipped. I wanted to play bishop b7 and attack the pawn. That's not actually a bad mouse slip. My bishop is decently placed on a6, and I'll go for the Fianchetto. Yeah, this is very reminiscent of some like Binko Gambit structure. Uh, is this a free pawn? Looks like a free pawn. I think he forgot the knight's pinned. I could take the knight first. Yeah, let's take the knight first. Attacking the queen. If takes back, I'm probably going to take on a6 with the queen. Just to prevent white from castling. If white wants to castle, he'll probably have to trade queens. Now I'll play this. I enjoy the tension here, because now I win another pawn. Now I'm up a pawn. Winning c3, and then I'll castle. Is rook b7 scary? Can allow it. That's weird. I gambit at the pawn, now I'm up a pawn, and now white has a little bit of compensation. Um, but trades make me happy. Let's take. Or do I want to take? Yeah, let's take. And then you can play this. Fight for the b-file. I'm happy trading all the rooks. Because these d-pawns are weak. And the a-pawn is also weak. And if he doesn't want to trade rooks, then he concedes uh, the b-file. Hello to more people in the chat. There's too many people to say hello to. But I see some recommendations. Be savvy. YouTube series inspired you to learn chess. That's good to hear. I don't think it's officially a series, but I am hoping to upload regular content, like apart from just the, the live streams. On D6 or F6? Probably d6. Oh, then knight c6. Wow. d6, knight c6. That's a tricky move. So maybe f6. Yeah, if I allowed knight c6, I would have lost a pawn. I think I can play this. Just trying to develop. Eventually, I want to play like d6 and then knight c7. Knight e3 is pretty much forced, I think. And then I'll bring the king in. Ah, I had this move. Oh, but then he had knight c4. Then knight c3. I should have found knight b5. But that's okay. Position's still good. 
still up a pawn. I'll put the knight on d4. And centralize the king. <laughs> yeah, it still takes a bit of work to win this. As white's king is decently placed. I think the plan is to bring the king to a5. It's weird, but like his king can't access any of these squares. So king a5 is hard to stop. <laughs> I just want to win the pawn. And this knight, I think, is relatively restricted. h3 is a good sign. Ooh, so he's defending, kind of. Hmm. Okay, let's start with this. Just want to make white tied down. There's actually a funny idea here, just to continually play waiting moves. Because white, white's tied down and the king can't move, so the only things that can move are these pawns. So I think eventually the pawns are going to become interlocked, and then white should be in Zugzwang. So I guess the question is how do I just force the pawns to be interlocked? Maybe g5. So I don't want to create too many weaknesses. If he plays g4, I play h6, and white's in Zugzwang. Also, knight d2 would be mate. So Oh, actually, if g4, I just take on f3. So white's already in Zugzwang. Wow. If he moves the knight, I win the pawn. The king can't move, and none of the pawns can move. That's so nice. I'm dedicating this to all the German people in the chat who invented the word Zugzwang. So he'll probably flag or lose all his pawns. OK, or at least lose one pawn. And now it's a matter of pushing this past pawn. Hmm. Let's bring the king. I'm going to be a bit adventurous. Bring the king to b2. Because then it creates this nice open lane. Let's play this. I just want to end the game right away. <laughs> That's a nice mate. Yeah, pushing the pawn would have eventually won, but um, yeah, the, the, this was the main reason of playing king b2, to checkmate from behind. Okay, uh, that was nice. Let's move on. I'm not taking challenges. I'm playing the Eastern Blitz Arena, um, trying to play a gambit every single game, which I think I'm achieving. The first game was Lafayette Gambit. The second game, I gambited some piece than this game was some weird like banco type gambit i am streaming from indonesia i refilled my data so i have enough data left for the next few days let's play d4 again i'll berserk there's a gambit i wanted to play okay in this case i'm going to play the um what's this called the black mardimer gambit knight c3 and then eventually f3 i know very little about this I think I know one line for black against this. Um, seems like he kind of knows what he's doing. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing. Just want to focus on developing. Okay, so I'm officially down a pawn. We'll castle and try and make use of the f-file. Always play king h1. And I think I'll start by maneuvering the queen to the king's side. Try and make some threats. Put the bishop on f4. As I, there's a few pieces that would like to access e5. And all my pieces are relatively happy. Every single piece has some purpose. I'll play a4. Make him sad. Now what to do? I don't want to trade. Probably knight e5. 
I don't think black can take with either piece because I take back and open the D file. And meanwhile, I just want to do this and maybe sack and maybe rook D3. Looks nice. So he's playing defensively. Let's play bishop d3. The bishop's happier. Targeting the knight. Queen h4, unexpected. I mean, bishop g3 looks sensible. Let's do it. If he takes and I take on h7. Also, f7 is attacked twice. So he defended, but now bishop e2. And the queen doesn't have any squares to keep f7 defended. <laughs> that gives me a free queen. And now it's a matter of trading and winning and attacking pawns. I'm enjoying these gambits so far. Let's play rook here. I want to remove the knight and win this pawn. Yeah, bishop f5, we'll trade. Yeah, I'll just keep trading. I mean, I'm up a full, I'm up a queen for a knight. And I have enough time. Ooh, free pawn. Yeah, it's nice being up a queen. Maybe I'll take take with a rook. And then take the knight. It's hard to keep an eye on the chat. Some talk about penguins. I have seen a lot of penguins recently. The only thing I have to pay attention to is not blundering back rank mate. Yeah, I guarantee rookie eight's going to be played. And then I'll crush all his dreams with h3. Ah, uh, there's some funny mating idea, which I would really like to set up. Which involves a queen sack. Uh, but now it's too difficult. So let's take and check first. Restrict the king. Let's play bishop e6, threatening maiden one. There we go. Okay. So, how many games was that? Four, four games? Four wins, 42nd place, 14 points. Uh, do I know what time I'll be streaming next? This is probably my last stream for a couple days. My next stream will probably be January 11th, or no, uh, January 7th, rhymes with 11th. Uh, I'm going to play another Gambit. What is this? <laughs> I don't even know what this opening is. Um, this already looks a bit uncomfortable. I guess I'll take, play knight c6. Maybe it's uncomfortable for both of us. Knight g4, bishop g5. Uh-oh. I could take on e4. This looks really bad, though. Might as well take on e4 and hope for the best. Yeah, this looks really bad. What have I done? So I'm gambiting a knight. Oh man. 
d5 maybe? This is so bad. What did I do? d6. No, oh, maybe d5. I just have to keep initiative. Maybe have some hope on time. At least his king is stuck in the center. But my king is also stuck in the center. Maybe here? Go for some trade. Queen d7. So now I want to castle king side at least. But he's 2200. He's going to beat me. Unless he flags. Okay, I have to retreat. B4 coming. Mm, good move. Also a good move. I have to take. Do I confuse him? Let's confuse him. This looks very suspicious, but it's a massive skewer fork. Don't see this every day, but I'm down two pieces. At least maybe he's confused a little bit. Please stay confused. If bishop f4 is c6, probably. Removing the guard of the bishop. If knight c7, rook c8. That's an interesting move. Let's move back. I have to win back at least one piece. Knight c7, rook c8. Ah, but he's doing stuff. Maybe rook. Rook c8, knight e6. Good move. Have to go for this line. This is really bad. Oh, but do, am I trapping the knight? Maybe I'm trapping the knight. Or maybe not. Or maybe I am. If I'm only down the exchange, then it's a miracle. <laughs> oh, he's going to get activity. No. Hmm. Maybe b5. Have to get the bishop to f6. Okay, I'm trying. To activate, but I can't get mated. This is really unfortunate. Okay, let's play here, centralize the king. And push the F pawn. No. Okay, he had some move. I'm about to flag, though. Ah, so unfortunate. I tried. I tried really hard. Requesting a Danish opening. I assume that's the Danish gambit. I could try the Danish gambit, sure. Okay, I'm 48th place. Four wins, one loss. That was actually a hard fought game. But I don't think I ever came back from <laughs> being down material.
Yeah, if I'm white, I'll play e4 next. Berserk. Hey, it's Bits. Karo Khan. Are there any gambits against Karo Khan? <laughs> Let's play knight f3. I'll have to uh, maybe invent something. I'll play the reverse Budapest with knight g5. If he takes. Ah, he doesn't take. So, how do I gambit the pawn? Let's play this. Maybe e6 soon. He's not letting me sacrifice material. Um, I'll play b4. <laughs> Take the pawn. I want the file to open up. Yeah, b4 is dubious, but it has its purposes. Because now at least my rook is active. And I have the bishop pair. It's actually not so bad. Like he just gave away his dark squared bishop. So all these squares can be in my control. Unless he plays c5. Please don't play c5. Actually, if he plays c5, I have bishop b5 check. Let's do this. Hmm. Maybe this. If C five, I'd probably play C four. Or maybe bishop c1. Yeah, probably bishop c1. Not the soundest of play, but I'm trying. <laughs> Still theory. Some, uh, some truth in that statement, but not really. That's a good move. Maybe bishop here. I wanted to play bishop here earlier, but there was knight f5 earlier. But now knight f5, I can just take it. And in the meantime, I would like to attack like g4, g5. Not sure what that does. f5. Let's play g4. Just want to open the g file. Always play bishop f1, but not in this position. Bishop is happy on d3. Okay, let's push pawns. I mean, the goal is to open up like one file on the king side. But it might be hard to do. Keep pushing. Take the queen. Yeah, so now he's preparing knight c8. Which is kind of hard to stop. So let's play f3. Knight c8, bishop a3. Mmm, good move. Have to go for this. And maybe I can take. If takes t6, I can take here first. And weird stuff is happening. Yeah, this is annoying. Can I legally castle? I can. Because <laughs> now, okay, I'm. I'll be temporarily down a knight, but the point is after rook takes e6, I want to play queen d5 and just pin everything. Hey, it's a sub, Z Nation Chess. My first ever subscriber subbing for 14 months in a row, a year and two months. It's a long time. 
Wow. I forgot he could save his knight. Um, and I'm low on time. Let's play this. Attacking the pawn. Ah, he's trading queens. No. This is really bad. I'm going to have to pull some miracle. At least I'm winning f4. I'm winning a7 now, because his knight's attacked. Yeah, rook e2 was a mistake. And he can't set up any mating attack with g5, I just en passant. Maybe rook. He's going to play knight e3, yeah. Let's defend the pawn. I want to play rook c6. Keep checking the king. Somehow the position's actually okay, I think. He might have perpetual. Oh, he's playing for a win. Hey, it's a sub. I'll thank you later. That was a good move. Mm. <sighs> okay, time is becoming a factor. This is nerve-wracking. He's going to flag. Hey, I won a game from a really bad position. Back to tournament. Thanks for the sub. Craw FTV. Appreciate it. Um, that was a dirty game on multiple levels. 42nd place. The gambits will continue. Last couple positions were not good from the opening. Have to try and fix that. Maybe play a more sound gambit. I still will try to play the, the Danish if it's possible. Okay, now I'm playing Alfilo. Alfilo 7. Alexandra Botez with a raid. The largest raid ever. Okay. Welcome, Alexandra Botez fans. And thanks for the... Yeah, thanks for sharing the viewers. Um, so I'm trying to play gambits every game, but it's hard to play a gambit in this line. I'm going to play a3, b4. It's the only reasonable way that I see of like sacking a pawn. But is he going to take it? Wow. Because now, oh, now I'll keep developing. This actually looks really reasonable. 
like bishop a3. I'll play d4 next, d5 coming. Is a Danish theoretically sound? Mm, it's not great against high level players. Like black can very easily equalize. But yeah, if people want me to play a, a particular gambit, let me know in the chat. Okay, so now the threat is bishop takes d6, winning back stuff. Oh, this is so tempting. I want to play f4 and just gambit the rest of the pawns. Let's do it. Queen takes g2, rook g1. Because open files are sometimes more valuable than pawns. In this case, maybe pawns are still valuable, but at least I'm, <laughs> I'm holding on to my main center pawns. I've gambited all the wing pawns. Time to castle. My king is safe. And this queen should be trapped at some point. Like rook h1, rook g1. Let's stop the queen from retreating. h6 is coming. But then rook b5. What is this? Rook b5, b6, d5. Looks fun. Because now I just want to open the center. Like, my pieces are all developed. But the center is not open. <laughs> Which might require sacrificing more pawns. Now there is bound to be some trade. Let's sack the rook. <laughs> If he takes the rook, this is looking so fun. Dikayo, 88, thanks for the sub. Alexandra Botez is going to shower. Good night. Good night, Alexandra. It's got to be late in California, yeah? It's 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m. in Indonesia. Do I take? Let's take. Wait a minute. Yeah, let's take. There's going to be some trades, but I'm hoping I'll have enough fuel left. Oh, it's 11.36. Wow. Not too late. Yeah, so we're trading a lot of stuff. I just want to sack one of the rooks. Like, I might play rook takes d7. Hmm. Maybe this. Now I have a rook outpost. And I'm preparing this and this. This is such a weird game. Rook c8, interesting. Queen d3 is nice. Going for queen g6, increasing pressure on the d-file. Still want to play knight e4. Okay, so he finally takes a rook. Let's take with knight. Or do I take with queen? Or do I play queen g6 check? So many choices. Let's take with knight. Because this knight and rook are completely out of play. And what am I down? I'm down the exchange and two pawns, which isn't bad. So I'm basically up a knight and rook. And e6 is the main target. Like I want to play this, which he's only helping me do. And I just want to take next. Can't really be defended. If king f7, I take twice. And then play queen h3 in the end and win the rook. I'll 
Otherwise, if he doesn't take the rook, I have queen g6 coming. But I should probably calculate. Queen g6, king f8, rook d6. Looks good enough. Preparing knight e6. Wait, knight e6, king e7. Hmm. Let's start with queen g4, targeting the rook. I'm realizing this might be still a bit tricky. Yeah. The king's kind of escaping. Let's go for this. I'm trying to prevent king g8. Because now if king g8 I take and win the rook. Meanwhile, I thought I had some threat of like knight c6. Maybe just knight e6. <laughs> knight f5. Trying to paralyze black. I mean, black is pretty much paralyzed, right? If the queen can't really move, the knight's pinned. The plan is probably f5, f4, or f6. f5 takes, yeah. If queen, or if, um, oh, neither piece can take, actually. Can I play knight g5? Just winning. This is like puzzle rush. Takes here and then mate. Next move. Otherwise, I win the queen. I did not play knife f5. I forgot about knife f5. More like knife g5. I'm playing rook d6 because I want to play queen g6 and have some fancy mate. Uh, what's the best way to win? I'll just do this. I'll bring the other knight or not. Okay, queen g6 is just too tempting. This black's completely stuck, and rook e6 to e8 is unstoppable. That was a really bizarre game. Like, sacking four pawns, and then sacking some exchange, and then just keeping compensation. have to try this a3, b4 move some more times and see if it's actually playable. So I'm in 37th place. That game took a while. About 17 minutes left. We'll have time for a couple more games. Urasov Gambit. Well, it's hard to play when I'm black. Let's play my favorite opening. If white allows it. Never mind. What's a Gambit I can play against this? Let's play a reverse Evans Gambit. This is probably really dubious. He didn't even take the pawn because he pre-moved knight f3. I'll play b4. Such a weird position. Can I play c6 and keep kicking the knight? Mm, let's play knight f6. take I mean I attempted to gambit the B pawn <laughs> maybe I'll attempt to gambit more stuff uh, but first let's do some normal stuff first d6 and develop I think uh, a decent plan is just to go for the immediate g5 g4 
takes, takes. Okay, this looks fine. I just want to play g4. Wow, now white is... That's not actually a sacrifice. Okay, let's still go for g4. And... This is going to be confusing. This might just be bad for black. I was expecting, like, takes. Maybe he should have taken on g4. Now, okay, things are simplifying. Take on h3. Somehow material is equal. I could win the pawn. Don't really want to take the pawn, but too late. Knight d7. So I'm up a pawn, but my structure is really bad. Let's play this. He might win the pawn back. Then we'll have some opposite color bishop position. Which actually, I might be getting some attack. Because where is the king going? Like if king h2, it's kind of stuck. If king f1, I keep checking. Play this. Oh, he just wants to take on a7. That's annoying. Let's play a5. He's playing very fast. I should probably play faster. Let me rook g6. The one benefit black has in this position is a pass pawn. I think I hear the sound of the ice cream truck. Do ice cream trucks exist in Indonesia? Some sound. Wait, I want to trade both rooks. Now I'm hungry too. Take, I mean, I take B1. Okay, I'm trading both rooks. It's a sad decision, but it's life. And I'm hoping to somehow win the opposite color bishop ending, which probably is very unlikely. But okay, these pawns are a little bit fixed. So there's some target. Put the pawn on a4. That's a good move. Maybe I'll do this. I have to take that's a good move I have a trick I don't know if it works but I'm, I'm gambiting a pawn in the end game because if he takes I play a3 I think no idea if this works Oh, he's scared to take. Okay. So let's play king f7. Put the bishop here. Ensuring the king is tied down. 
maybe g5. G4, probably no good, so let's do this. I have an outside passer. If somehow we traded bishops, it would be winning for black. But that's hard to achieve. I think the goal is to bring the king to b3. Or maybe put the pawn on h5 first. Hmm. Actually, I'll put the bishop on g6 first. Interesting. I don't know who's playing for a win, though. I want to play c5. If he plays c5, I'm probably happy. I'll put the bishop on d1, then reposition my king on e6, and put my pawn on c6. Problem is I don't want to allow king e5. So it's a bit tricky. Maybe I'll put the bishop on b1. And then I want to walk around to b5. It's a very risky play. But now I'm up on time. This is the plan. OK, this is actually feeling slightly better. Ah, that was a good move. That there. So we could trade. But now I'm up on time. <laughs> I'm going to try and flag him and also just win the position, too. A good move. Somehow I flagged him. 92 moves. I feel slightly dirty, but it was an interesting endgame. Like, can't let your guard down. The position keeps evolving. There's all these king maneuvers. I was inspired by Magnus Carlsen, because there were many games in the World Championship. Carlsen was just playing out like completely drawn positions, but he was trying to find ideas. So 
That's the nature of chess. Uh, I think I have time for one more game. We'll try and finish it with a gambit to keep the theme alive. I've not really been looking at the chat. Okay, I'm playing b5 because that's some sort of gambit. And then we'll play a6. Some very early sort of Banco gambit. E4 is not a bad move. You can play. Let me play this. If E5, then I have the D5 square. And this diagonal is nice. Might be hard for white to develop the bishop so soon. I'm probably threatening to take and then take back. So yeah, knight f3 was probably the best move. I'll go for bishop g7 and castling. Have to be careful. I think I can take and then take here and then bishop g7. always have to be aware of bishop takes f7 sacrifices, but I don't think it works. No, I just want a castle. I have a double fiend keto and an extra open file. Like the queen side files are open, typical of the banco. I'll play h6. Question the bishop. It's a sub. L cap it and PDX. Thanks for the sub. Three months in a row. Oh, El Capitan. Okay. <laughs> that name was slightly confusing. Let's play this move. I want to win E5. Good move. Maybe I can do this. If he takes and wins e7, I should win b2 in the end, unless he plays bishop a3, which is possible. But then I can, at the very least, least win e5. I forgot about d7. I guess I'll have to treat this as a gambit now, even more of a gambit. Rook d8, probably? Yeah, I gave away the pawn for the open file. But is it enough compensation? I just want to play bishop c8, attacking the queen and the bishop, and then there's queen c4. I guess it's a kind of forcing. Bishop c8, queen c4, knight a5. I can't draw arrows. Knight a5, queen b4. Mm. Knight a7 do anything? Knight a7 just looks sad. Rook a5, there's a4. Bishop c8, queen c4, knight a5, queen b4. Don't really see much. g5. And g5 is only helping him. Uh, maybe rook d5. Let's play rook d5. Targeting the pawn. 
can still win the e7 pawn, but I don't think he wants to take on c6. If bishop c4, I probably take with the knight on e5. Ah, but then he wins g6 in the end. Takes, 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 takes. That's unfortunate. That's not good. If I take with rook, this is really not good. Maybe bishop c8. Let's try it. Look what else to do. <sighs> Unleashing my queen. But I have very big problems here. Because the rook is pinned to the pawn, which is pinned to the king, and g6 is going to fall. Again, I'm probably going to be hoping for some miracle. But okay, if queen g3, I have rook c5. Queen f4, no. Oh, f7 is still a, a problem. Maybe g5. Bishop takes, takes, takes. That's not good. So let's play this. I'm sacking the exchange, gambiting more material. And at least, okay, when he wins the rook, I'll be attacking b2 and I'll have threats of g5. So still some initiative. He's hesitating, which is a good sign. Wow. So if I take, it's a good move because he's making me think. I think I'll go for this, try and weather the storm. Maybe I can take, can I take on e5? Maybe I'll play this move. Such a sad move. But at least I'm defending stuff. Like this and this. And I have plans of rook a5, or c6 maybe, attacking e5. I'm currently up, am I up a piece? I'm up a bishop for three pawns. Now I have two pieces for rook and three pawns, right? Play c6. Can I get away with this? No, because queen takes f7. So let's play this. This is unpleasant. Let's play this. Attacking e5. If rook g3 I take... Good move. Yeah, this is really sad. I still have my minor pieces, though. Queen takes e5 is coming, or rook takes e5. Yeah, somehow this still looks okay. Maybe rook takes a2 soon. Or would that be too soon? <laughs> Maybe queen f6. Solid looking move. Oh, queen f6 is a blunder. No. Such a bad move. Oh, but he didn't see it. He blunders his queen. It's a miracle. He could have just taken the queen and then won the knight. What a terrible move. <laughs> Okay, so now let's not blunder this away, keep my composure. 
Put the bishop on e5. To fork the rooks. Take a rook. Go for mate. Mm, let's play bishop e5. There we go. Okay. I was not expecting to win that game at a certain point. Like, it seemed like every move he was just punching me in the face. <laughs> the, the, probably the computer graph of this game is going to be like a roller coaster. But roller coasters are fun. Um, okay, that was a fun stream. A lot of messy Gambit games. It's hard to play a Gambit every game. Um, but I think I'm going to end it there because this was very stressful. Uh, thanks guys for watching and thanks for the donation, Dave G Dragon. Um, yeah, I do have to go, so I'll be back in the future. Stay tuned for a video on YouTube tonight and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.